Let's start by talking about the basic structure of a matrix. On each question of your test, you will be presented with a three by three matrix that is made up of nine total elements, eight of which are visible, and one of which is always missing. And to find this missing element, you need to look at your six answer choices labeled A through F and discover which one best matches the missing element and completes the matrix. In order to figure out which answer choice best matches your missing element, you need to figure out what the underlying logic is for the entire matrix. And what that means is taking a look at all of the elements and how they are organized and trying to identify a pattern. For the purposes of this video and future problem solving videos, we will be referring to the elements as one through nine, with one always being the top left element and nine always being the bottom right missing element. Each matrix is defined by at least one logical feature or one logical pattern, but it can contain several logical patterns. In most cases, a logical pattern will consist of three groups of three elements organized in various different ways, such as side to side, from top to bottom, or sometimes diagonally, and we'll look at each of those three orientations. When three groups of three elements are organized from left to right, we call that logic by rows. We would refer to this row as the first row or the top row. This row would be the second row or the middle row and the third row or the bottom row. When three groups of three elements are organized from top to bottom, we call that logic by columns. We would refer to this column as the first column or the left column, second column or the middle column, and third column or the right column. Oftentimes, three groups of three elements can be visualized in diagonal patterns, which is the least intuitive of the three different organizational patterns because in a three by three matrix, there is only the possibility of one clear diagonal visible without doing any rearrangement. Um, so to see the other three diagonals that exist in this three by three matrix, you have to physically move some of the elements around in order to visualize the other diagonals. Once we rearrange the elements as shown, we can see that there are indeed three different diagonals of three elements each present within this matrix. Within each diagonal, there should be shared features. So elements three, four, and eight should have similar features like be the same color, be the same shape, etc. Elements two, six, and seven should also follow that same principle, but maybe they have a different thing that's in common. So maybe elements three, four, and eight are all blue, but elements two, six, and seven are all black. And then elements one, five, and our missing element nine. Remember, element nine is always missing. We don't know what it is, and we need to figure out what it is. Once we see that our other two diagonals all share some kind of feature in common, we can assume that the feature that elements one and five share in common would also be the feature present in element nine. So let's say elements one and five are white. We can assume that element nine is also white and then look at our answer choices and pick the one that matches uh, what we think element nine should be. This is why we call this organizational pattern a one, five, nine, diagonal pattern. This is another way to arrange three groups of three elements into a diagonal pattern, where once we were looking from the top left to the bottom right in elements one, five, and nine, now we see a clear diagonal from top right to bottom left in elements three, five, and seven. So if you're looking at a matrix and you see similarities between element three and element five, you may have a diagonal pattern on your hands and I'll show you what that looks like. Once we have rearranged the elements as shown, you can see that again, we have three different diagonals made of three different elements. And within each diagonal, all three of those elements will share similarities. So for this one, you want to look at elements one, six, and eight to see what similarities they have in common. Maybe they are all square in shape. Uh, then look to elements three, five, and seven. Maybe they are all circles in shape. If you can uh, if you can prove that elements 1, 6, and 8 have a feature in common and elements 3, 5, and 7 have a feature in common, then you can reasonably assume that elements 2, 4, and the missing element 9 
all should have similar features as well. So if elements two and four are circles, then you can assume reasonably that element nine is also a circle and find your correct answer. This is why we call this organizational pattern a two, four, nine diagonal, because that is the diagonal on which we can find our correct answer. Sometimes a matrix can be organized in a completely random pattern meaning there's no row pattern, no column pattern, and no diagonal pattern. Even if you're faced with a randomly organized matrix, there's still a way to solve it. What you need to do is look for those three groups of three elements, because they're still there, they're just scattered at random. And keep in mind that one of those groups of three will be missing one of its elements. So really what you'll have is you'll have two groups of three and you'll have one group of two. So for example, let's say elements one, five, and seven were all squares. That's one group of three elements that share a feature. Let's say elements six, four, and eight were all circles. Those are three elements that share a feature. Those are our two groups of three. So then you would see element two and element three are both triangles, and that's only two out of the three. So that means we need another group of three elements total, which means element nine should be a triangle to complete uh, those three elements. And that is the easiest way to find your answer when you are given a random matrix. Now let's go over the five different patterns of logic that exist within this matrix. If we look at our rows from left to right, we can see that the format of each of the shapes are the same throughout each row. In the top row, they're all this uh, arrow that has a bit of a notch in its back end. In the second row, it's all triangles. And in the third row, it is all these L shapes. So the format of the shape is consistent through each of the rows. If we look at our columns, we can see that the orientation matches. So all of the elements in the left column point to the bottom left corner. All of the elements in the middle column point to the bottom right corner. And all of the elements in the right column point to the upper right hand corner. If we take a look at our one, five, nine diagonal, we can see that the outline of the shapes are uh, the same throughout. So in our one, five, nine diagonal, they are all dotted line outlines. In elements two, six, and seven, they are all single solid outlines. And then in elements three, four, and eight, they are double outlines. So again, three diagonals, and within each diagonal, there is a, a similar feature that is present in all of the elements in each of the diagonals. In our 249 diagonal, the number of shapes is the same. So in elements 3, 5, and 7, there are three shapes present in each element. In element 2, 4, and 9, there are two shapes present. And in element one, six, and eight, there's only one shape present. And finally, all of the frames throughout the matrix are organized randomly. So they are still in three groups of three, but they are not organized in a neat row, column, or diagonal. They are spread out randomly. One of the groups of three is present in element one, six, and eight. All three of those elements have a dotted outlined frame. The next group of three is element three, four, and nine. Those three elements have a solid single outlined frame. And the final group of three is element two, five, and seven, which all have double or very thick outlined frames. Now that you understand the basic structure of a matrix, move on to the next section to complete some real matrix practice problems.